Except I've heard too, failure in university is a thing. It's not a myth, does I go to take it from someone who's been in university for the past six years? But where do I've seen students come and go? Just because you were doing well in high school doesn't mean that you'll come to university and thrive, even though you do have the potential to do so. Therefore, it is important for you to know what certain things predispose students to failure. And Buffet, if you're interested to find out, stay tuned and watch the entire video, Buffet. Because you know, we don't only learn from successes, we learn from a lot of failures as well. Stay tuned, Buffet. Good to come to Zofa Goloniki and if you want to turn up subscribe and follow us, enjoy the video. Even though most of the times, guys, there is no single attributable reason to success or failure, because it's always a multitude of things that come together and subsequently lead to failure or success, because we can't attribute failure only to laziness, and we can't attribute success only to hard work, right? There are a lot of things that need to align in order for you to succeed or fail, but we will find that there is always one or two highlightable reasons that kind of took that brand to say this is why i failed and this is why i succeeded and that is what we're going to focus on in this video so we have two categories here for failure there are reasons that are beyond the student's control and there are reasons that are within a student's control and most of the time i often find that well, reasons why a lot of students fail are reasons that are within a student's control. So fortunate or unfortunate for the particular student. Let us start, guys, with the reasons that are beyond the student's control. With these ones, guys, most of the time the student does not even see these ones coming, right? They just happen. We don't know why they are happening to you specifically out of all people, but they happen. And primarily, it is when life happens all at once. I've seen this with a lot of students, guys. It has often happened to me as well. When certain aspects of your life go wrong. You know, most guys, when it comes to balance, we're often trying so hard to balance, in a unique way, of course, different components of our health. Right? There's your social health you're trying to take care of with your friends and family. There's financial health that needs to be on par. There's academic health, of course, the very reason why you're in university. There's spiritual health, your relationship with whoever you believe in. Right? And there are other aspects that you're trying to... Your mental health, guys. But now what happens if different domains of your health start collapsing all at the same time? Your relationship with your partner is crumbling, desiring your attention to fix that. While you're looking at that, you need support from your friends and advice, but they're nowhere to be found. Whilst you're looking at that, your funding is starting to be shaky because your bursary hasn't paid and they want to kick you out of res and they can't register your academics. While you're still looking at that, you receive a call from home. Someone you care about deeply has fallen sick or has passed on. What do you do? How can you blame the student for all these things? How could you possibly foresee all these things going wrong? And of course, you're going to start deteriorating physically because you're using energy drinks to cope with academics. How do you even sit down and focus when all these things are in your mind pulling and dragging for your attention? Guys, this is a reality for a lot of students and we cannot blame them for this. And the second cause of failure among a lot of students, guys, is an unfortunate situation where you get a difficult course and a difficult lecturer. A lecturer who does not care to explain, a lecturer who takes pride in this course being very difficult. And beginning of the course, they say, a lot of students fail my course. Out of 200 students, only two will pass. So all the best. Surprise tests here. I will not teach you that. Go learn it by your own. I know it's very difficult, but you must do it on your own. Very unfortunate for students who get into this type of a course. Because you get there, the lecturer is priding themselves on how difficult this course, the most difficult course within this degree. So you must find a way. Guys, that is very, very sad. 
Because in a teaching institution, in a learning environment, there is no learning there. There is intimidation and there is a lot of struggle. And because failure means different things to different people and has subsequent side effects or subsequent consequences to different students, some students fail the course and their bursars say, look, man, we can't continue funding you. You have to find an alternative funder because you're failing this course. And some perhaps will be like, okay, look, I'll just repeat it next year, which is so unfortunate, but it's a reality and it happens. Then Bafetu comes the more common situations on a daily basis that students face that they have absolute control over. But because there are things that they do not do or things that they do that they are not supposed to do, they end up failing. And number one, Bafetu, the first reason that I want to talk about is suffering in silence. You see this one, guys, it's a very common theme. New environment, you're already intimidated, you don't have any friends, and you're not even confident enough to speak out. You suffer. You don't have anyone to tell. You don't have confidence to address it with the people that teach you. You suffer in silence. That is a very common breaking point. That is a very common downfall for a lot of students, guys. If you're in university and you go through a struggle and you do not speak to anyone who can potentially help you about it, guys, you will fail that course, right? And what students tend to do is that they speak out when it's already too late. They're like, I haven't attended five lectures. Now I realize that me not attending these lectures means that I won't write the exam. And they're like, I was struggling from this and that and that. What's going to happen then? You've already missed these things. You missed these submissions. You missed all of that. The period within which you could have asked for help and received the help is gone. And now you have to fail that course and you cannot qualify for an exam. For those who do not know, in university, there are things called DPs, duly performed tasks, right? These are tasks that qualify you to write the final exam for that particular course, particular subject, right? And if you did not complete these DPs, you do not qualify to write that exam. Without writing that exam, you do not have a mark for that course. Without a mark for that course, you have subsequently failed that course. It means that if you do not complete these tasks, right, before their due date, it means that you have subsequently failed that course. And guys, a lot of students that do not disclose their suffering in due time when there is enough time to do something about it, they will fail that course, guys, and that's a given. So my advice to you is that if you go through a specific experience, mental health, life happens at the same time, ask yourself, who can help me here in this institution? And guys, if you go through something that is mental-based, and you go to the mental base facilities for that institution, student wellness, speak to a therapist offered by the university. There is a record to show that I was suffering from this. I asked for help. I contacted the lecturer. I contacted the tutor, but I did not receive that kind of help. Then a concession can be done for you. But if you suffer in silence, nothing will be done to help you. Number two, Buffett, is the reason that is within a student's control is doing a course that you do not like. And I'm sure there are a lot of reasons why we do courses that we do not like. Maybe we're being forced by family, or maybe we just want to be in university and be studying something, or maybe we're still trying to find what is it that I actually like, but I want to find it in university. There are various reasons, but that reason on its own, it is a reason a lot of students fail. Because if you're doing something you do not like, you're more likely not to care about that particular course. And if you do not care about that course, trust me, you will eventually fail that course and you'll still not care about it. If you're doing a course that you do not like, I would suggest that you're on a journey to find what you actually like. Give a concerted effort on that course that you do not like so that at least you do not fail that course. So that when you find what you want to do, the marks from the course that you're doing that you do not like can support your move into the next course that you want to do. Because if you're failing this one, why would the other course that you want to do take you? Because it's like this student, student is a failure. Why would we accept the student into this course anyway? But if you're getting at least good grades in this course that you do not like and you're pushing yourself, it means that they'll consider you for the next course that you apply for. You get me? So, guys, don't now, if you're doing a course that you do not like, drop everything, right? And it happens sometimes that you find yourself in situations where you're like, this course is draining me so much. I do not like it. I hate it. You may hate it because you don't like it at all. You may hate it because of the teaching, the lecturers, the type of course content. There are a lot of reasons. But still put in an effort while you are still trying to find a solution, 
right because it's not like you're sitting down you're actively trying to find a solution that will eventually work for you and once you find that solution jump ship on the sky because there's no point in doing a course that you don't like and number three guys this is a very common reason you'd be surprised but bad influence is still a thing in university right people get here they're so desperate to make friends so they kind of come together with people that are close to them and sometimes people that are around you are not necessarily good people some are just people that have been in university for the longest time and they've been failing in university therefore they basically you associate with those people and they give you that kind of energy that does not care about academics and sometimes you just meet genuinely negative people right they never see the good in anything that's not good and you meet people that are just here to have fun in university and they influence you and all you're doing is having fun Gandhi academics are still the most important things the very reason why you're here and whether you're not paying attention because of the influence right so influence in university is still a big thing and I've seen a lot of students go the wrong path not caring about academics because of the environment that they find themselves in so remember guys to control your environment right be very intentional with the type of people you associate with right ask yourself are these people going to the kind of direction that i want to go if they're not pull out from that friend group pull out from that circle and find yourself an intentional positive circle that will contribute positively to your journey and number four guys is a category that i want to talk to you guys about students who just don't learn right students who are okay with doing the same mistake repeating it until it becomes a habit and they fail because of this same mistake and they don't change their habits they don't go on a journey to learn what to do differently, right? Is my note-taking process wrong? Am I not practicing past papers? What am I doing wrong? They don't consult anyone about it. They keep doing the same thing and hoping for a different result. Because they know, they know which I'm doing something wrong, but they're not interested in finding out what. So guys, when you're in university, you're in a process of learning. What works, what doesn't work. You're adjusting, guys. You're adjusting. Some things don't work. And you have to forgive. Oguti, no, this thing doesn't work. Okay, I accept. But what does? Let me learn. Let me try out things. You must be inquisitive in university, guys. Oh, you, this study method is nice. Let me try it out. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay. Okay, it doesn't work. Let me try out something else. Right? Don't repeat the same thing even though you know it doesn't work. Right? You'll eventually fail. And you keep failing. And you keep failing. And now you're like, I'm just a failure. Yeah, but, but you don't learn. When you do not learn, open your mind to learning, engage with the information, read, watch YouTube videos. There's a lot of resources within the university institution that you can use to equip yourself with certain skills that will make your life easier. And lastly, guys, university is an adjustment. This is a different zone, guys. It's a war zone. It's different from high school. So there's a level of adjustment that you need to do. The sooner you accept that you need to adjust, the better you will adjust. Right? There are certain things about yourself that will come into question in university. That's absolutely normal. There'll be a point where you feel like you're losing yourself. That's okay. Be on a journey. A journey consists of ups and downs that you accept. When you're up, you're up. When you're down, you're down. You do what you need to do. You push yourself to certain limits that you never knew you had. That is part of the journey. The key thing it is always to be better than you were yesterday. And if you keep improving, just a little bit, just a little bit, you'll become better. And at some point, you'll be proud of yourself. But if you to subscribe and follow please like this video. Share it, guys. Hit the notification button so that you're the one person who is first to know Ugoti Udamdizo has uploaded an amazing video like this one. Don't forget give a video to subscribe to Udamdizo. We're learning and we're growing together, guys. And please stay watch on TikTok. We'll be opening a series where we'll be teaching specific topics eh, of maths, physics, life science, consumer studies, languages, my feet, at an affordable rate. Because I'm a student, guys. I have to survive one way or the other. But I still want to educate you guys. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm Dizolona, signing out at Danko.